Welcome back to Roadies Roam the World. Make sure you watch our videos on day one of our trip to Kennedy Space Center. This video starts on day two and you are in for a thrill. Please remember to like and subscribe to see our future videos. The Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit entrance is that of the 184 foot tall external fuel tank and solid rocket boosters used for all shuttle missions to produce 6.5 million pounds of thrust. Beyond this entrance finds the retired Space Shuttle Atlantis. Once inside the doors, you are treated to a quick history of how the shuttle came to be and the life of the Space Shuttle Atlantis before you get a spine-tingling reveal. Those of you like me that grew up watching the early days of the shuttle program and are fascinated by it, after that unbelievable reveal, seeing a real life shuttle with my own eyes was a sensation that I will never forget. Having watched in awe, year after year, seeing the shuttle go up, seeing updates on their missions, seeing them land safely, and seeing two of them never come back, I had to pinch myself to believe that I was finally seeing one in person. Even better, while this is most likely frowned upon, 
and the people at Kennedy probably misjudging the ability of someone with monkey arms like mine, I got to touch the tiniest tip of one of the payload bay doors. First launched in October 1985 and last flown in July 2011, the almost 26-year career of Atlantis flew almost 125 million miles or 203 million kilometers while orbiting the Earth, completing 4,848 orbits of the planet during its 33 different missions. Known as an orbiter, the shuttle program started in 1977 with Enterprise, built without engines for landing tests only and was not able to be used in space. Five fully operational orbiters started with Columbia in 1981, followed by Challenger in 1983, Discovery in 1984, Atlantis in 1985, and lastly Endeavour in 1992. Spanning over 30 years, the five different shuttles completed 133 successful missions, including countless experiments, launching numerous satellites, placing the Hubble Space Telescope and many parts of the International Space Station into orbit during a collective 1,323 days in space. Launched in 1990 and broadening our understanding of the universe, we see a full-size replica of the Hubble Space Telescope that was last serviced by the Space Shuttle Atlantis in May of 2009. So there's a mock-up of an astronaut in their EVA suits. EVA stands for Extravehicular Activity. And that is right next to a mock-up of the Hubble Space Telescope. But once it was operational, it did a fantastic job of looking at deep space objects. It's kind of been rendered obsolete with the James Webb Telescope, but still pretty cool.
The exhibit could not be complete without a tribute to the two shuttles that never made it back and those that gave their lives in an effort to better our understanding of the universe we inhabit. First, the Shuttle Challenger, which broke apart just 73 seconds after takeoff on January 28, 1986. We pay tribute to Commander Scobie, astronauts Smith, McNair, Onizuka, Resnick, Jarvis, and teacher Krista McAuliffe. Shuttle Columbia disintegrated over Texas and Louisiana upon re-entry on February 1st, 2003. We pay tribute to Commander Husband and astronauts McCool, Anderson, Chawla, Brown, Clark, and Ramon. President Ronald Reagan lamented during his 1986 address to the nation as tribute to those who gave their last full measure of devotion. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us by the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them, this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Mm -hmm.